about uh, uh, okay so uh, like talking about today's uh, session okay uh, like uh, today i'll be giving you the demo i'll be basically discussing with you on uh, middleware uh, technology basically okay so uh, uh, i'll be basically be discussing with you on the middleware technology so like uh, uh, how you are basically your web sphere has actually come into the picture so that is what i'm going to explain you so i'll uh, let you know like why we are using a web sphere what is the scope of your particular web sphere based application server and uh, 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 like uh, you know how your this web sphere is a part of middleware architecture all these things so these are all the various topics that uh, i'll be uh, discussing uh, with you okay so so shall i continue uh, gautam yeah okay no problem okay fine i'm ready to take okay fine so uh, talking about uh, the middleware architecture level okay so when we really talk about the middleware architecture uh, earlier there used to be a kind of the architecture which we usually call as a two tier architecture so in a two tier architecture if you see my screen uh, so basically it has a, uh, you know a, like a level 1 and a level 2 okay so a level 1 is basically uh, based out of a client so uh, level 1 client means it can be anybody who is basically trying to send a particular request okay and whenever any client sends basically a request so what kind of the request it could be a http request so the request that you are trying to uh, send it uh, via using your uh, particular uh, uh, sorry one second so it could be uh, uh, basically be a request that could be sent via your particular uh, browser it could be a request uh, that could be sent by your particular uh, uh, you know uh, i'm trying to execute somewhere or other you know backends like i want to upload some files onto a particular uh, uh, network uh, basically or maybe you know let's take an example like uh, i am a user who wants to upload my resume okay uh, resume onto a nokri portal or something like that okay so any such kind of the request that basically comes from the server side uh, sorry that comes from the client side that is from the browser it basically hits a particular server okay so what is a server server is nothing but which basically holds your database server is the one which basically holds your um, uh, you know multiple application servers like say let's say the web sphere and all this thing which basically you know where you host your java jtv based applications the application that have been developed by the developer so all these things are been basically been hosted on a particular server so now what happens is that in a two tier architecture so from the level 1 whenever any request that was been sent by the client the request used to go to a particular server so the server used to get that particular request and reply back to the client with a response whatever the kind of the request that he would have made it across okay so this is how the two tier architecture used to work but then this particular two tier architecture there used to be certain flaws you can say there used to be certain uh, uh, flaws like uh, uh, one of the particular flaw was in terms of the security if i really talk about earlier on the server itself we used to have our so called our database at the level 2 itself only we used to host our applications the applications that have been developed by a java j2 guy okay the developer who basically wants to uh, you know uh, display his particular website let's say an icsabank.com or sdfcbank.com or whatever it is so these are all the websites that have been developed on a java j2 base and these particular websites are been hosted on a level 2 that is nothing but you know at a server level now what is to happen in terms of the security is that whenever your client is sending a particular request to the server as your database also used to exist your it used to be your data server also so your database used to get directly exposed to the client so always there used to be a risk of your data getting exposed what of the data you are transferring to your particular database all those information used to get exposed and that was a one of the risk matter that used to exist in this particular two tier architecture second problem that we used to uh, face in this two tier architecture is that uh, the load basically when you talk about now when i really talk about a load what does a load means let's say uh, let's take an example like if there are hundreds of the users who are going to access your particular website okay who are going to access your particular website and for example at any particular point of time suddenly now there is a huge number of the request that is coming on your particular server there are the chances that your this particular server may get completely overloaded there are the chances that your server may not be responding why 
because your database is also existing on the same server your application is also existing on the same server everything having on the same server can sometimes cause maybe because of the database <coughs> my application can get affected maybe because of the application the database can get affected or maybe it could be because your server would completely got exhausted because your database is there and your application is there having everything in a single server at times causes an issue where your server goes down completely okay in order to avoid such kind of the situations they basically introduce a new architecture which is currently being used that is something which we call as a three tire architecture okay so any any questions uh, uh, you have uh, gotham you want to ask me no no please continue okay fine so now coming back uh, uh, like uh, 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 coming back to your uh, particular uh, three tire architecture so what is that new thing what they introduced over here when we really talk about a uh, three tier architecture in a uh, three tier architecture basically like uh, there are three things there is a level 1 there is a level 2 there are level 3 okay so level 1 basically deals with your client as usual so there is no change in the position over there but here what they have done is that in the level 3 they basically introduce the data server database server so they said like let the level 3 be with your database server and let the level 2 be with your particular application server that is nothing but which we call as a middleware servers okay so now in this architecture what is the advantage of introducing this kind of the architecture what happens here is the here is that you are level 1 that is nothing but the client whatever the kind of the request it could be either be a sql request your database kind of a request maybe you are requesting some query it could be any of the request that could be coming from a particular browser http request or probably any kind of the file uploading or downloading whatever the things that is basically happening so all those kind of the request that will be directly be coming to your middleware servers so what your middleware server would be doing is that it will be taking that particular request based on the kind of the request it will be deciding whether it has to go to the database if the method has to get executed to send the request to the database so the request would be sent to the database your database would be executing whatever the level of the queries that it needs to execute maybe your select statement insert statement updates you know, whatever the kind of the sql queries that it needs to execute those kind of the query will be executed and the response is then sent back to your particular middleware server and your middleware server sends back the response to your particular client so this is how your three tier architecture is basically been defined so the advantage what were the disadvantages in the previous architecture like in terms of the security if you talk about no doubt database is considered to be a very good in terms of the security but still i am not allowing a client to directly interact with the database server so there is a middleware server who is sitting in between and he says you send me the request i will take your request and based on your request i'll give you back the response so i am not exposing my database server so in this way what happens is that if somebody really wants to hack the data that is being getting transferred if somebody wants to know what is the backend database that is running so all these kind of the informations can be taken care by the middleware server so your middleware server is considered to be again as a highly secured servers okay which can basically you know manage all your security part and and avoid any kind of the vulnerabilities or any kind of the issues uh, that can happen to your database server apart from that the other advantage what here happens is in terms of the load you can see here like uh, at level 2 we have a middleware server so this middleware server is nothing but where we host all our java jtwe based application so you are basically hosting all your java jtwe based application and once you host your java jtwe based application so what of the kind of the load that basically comes at level 2 your level 2 handles that particular load once it handles that particular load your request is then sent to the database server so what is happening here load is taken by the middleware server it evenly distributes within your database server so your main your database where you are storing your data is not at all been heavily been loaded and there are less chances of your server getting crash okay so these are the uh, the major advantages that i can say like you know having using a three tier architecture so any questions gotham over here you would like to ask me have you understood this architecture no no actually i know this No. Yeah. You have an idea on this. Okay. Yes. Okay. Cool.
Okay. Actually, I have read some uh, YouTube videos, so uh, okay. I got this experience. Okay. Yeah, uh, this is a very important part, you know, uh, Gautam, because actually, before uh, uh, I strongly feel, because uh, before I directly jump onto the web sphere, it's very important for a person to know what your middleware architecture does. So in the middleware, yeah, yeah, there are a lot I know, of but uh, I have already known, so I am just giving the information. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Side. No, no, it's a good thing. It's a good thing, really. Yeah. So that is all about your three-tier architecture. So how your middleware really works metamorphically. If you see here in this particular diagram, uh, your middleware servers, like your web sphere, you say, your web logic server, you say, or any kind of the application server, you would be hosting on a particular machine. Okay, and the machine basically has an operating system. And on that operating system, you can host your middleware server and your, on your middleware server, you can host any kind of the distributed applications over here. Okay. Now, operating system means your middleware servers are not only restricted to only to a Windows or maybe to a Linux, nothing like that. You can host on any kind of the operating system. They are very much, you can say, you know, uh, a platform independent. Okay. Uh, like uh, it's basically like uh, you can install on a Windows operating system. You can host a particular, let's take an example of a web sphere itself. Web sphere, you can host it on a middleware, uh, like on a Windows, on a Linux, on a Unix, on a AIX, on a Solaris, or even on a zero operating system. Zero operating system is like, uh, say, example, like your Mac. Mac is a zero operating system. So you can install these particular, uh, uh, any kind of the middleware servers on any kind of the operating system. So there is no restriction for it. Apart from that, you have your host tool. So what you see here is there is a distributed application, there is a middleware, there is an operating system. So if you want uh, the middleware server to, uh, like for example, your web sphere is hosted on uh, uh, host one, that is nothing but machine A, and uh, uh, your web sphere, another web sphere application server is also hosted on a machine two. Now, if you want to make any kind of a communication, you can very well communicate it via using your network. So you need to just make sure that your network is connected and accordingly you define the respective host names and the port numbers and everything and your communication starts happening. So this is how middleware metamorphically it has been defined. And uh, where okay. and where your middleware really is, as you see here from the diagram, you understand it is basically sitting in the middle. So basically your middleware system deals with your database. So any kind of the communication, so uh, like, you know, I will be, uh, I have written a particular program where I want to insert a particular data into a database. So yes, my middleware system, like any of the things like web sphere or anything, it can directly communicate with my particular database and my middleware system, it can even communicate with any kind of a particular programming language. So it could be a Java J2E or uh, maybe, you know, uh, like I would have written some uh, PHP based coding or uh, something and a different codings, whatever I would have written. Okay. So all those things you are on your particular middleware system, it basically supports. Apart from that, it supports your distributed system. So your distributed system can be any kind, like any, any kind of a third party or anything like, for example, your LDAP, your uh, uh, so-called you are any kind of the security model that you want to implement it along with your middleware system so you can very well implement it and of course your middleware system it basically sits on a particular networking domain so you can communicate uh, you can connect to a particular network and between two different networks your middleware system can work in terms of the communication in terms of, of uh, sending back each and everybody you know the request and the response and all this stuff. and finally your middleware system sits on a particular operating so this way you can uh, uh, probably you may have you will be getting an idea like how your middleware system really works so any questions till this particular slide yeah actually what is a uh, distributed system i didn't know about that uh, a distributed system can be any kind of a uh, like you know it's a basically uh, you can say like any kind of a, a backend service you can say or any kind of the backend service that runs on a multiple, uh, you know, in any kind of the environment and you want, uh, let, let me make it a very simple, like for example, you want to communicate to any kind of a third party based application servers, okay, or any kind of a third party based, uh, uh, you know, uh, a particular API, or uh, probably there is a third party vendor to whom your communication should happen. Probably they are sending some information to the application that has been hosted on a particular middleware server. So if such kind of the communications, if you want to make, so that is where exactly your distributed systems come. So distributed systems, it can be anything, any kind of a third party or maybe any kind of a Java, uh, Java 
client that you would have written there could be some kind of a external java clients like say rmis and all this kind of the things so or uh, probably you may want your web sphere to communicate with any kind of a sap based application so any of these kind of the modules or the applications if you want to have any kind of a communication are uh, probably either to your messaging queues okay mq mb whatever we say that is all again you know part of doing the communication sending the messages to and flow okay so those kind of the things usually deals with your particular distributed system architecture so that is what exactly is your distributed system is it clear or any questions okay yeah no okay fine yeah, okay. please continue yeah so this is how uh, you know your middleware basically it works metamorphically uh, uh, it basically manages among these things now coming to the major okay that is fine your middleware communicates with programming language and all this thing that is fine but we as a middleware admins we have been actually been called as a middleware admins that's okay uh, we work on a different set of the profiles like maybe you are working as a web logic admin maybe you are working as a web sphere admin maybe you are working as a jboss or apache tomcat administrator working it's okay that's a, a different level of the structure what we are having but they all are the part of the middleware architecture so now i am going to completely explain you how your middleware architecture is basically been defined so uh, basically i am going to talk with you on this level 2 because we have to deal with this particular level 2 architecture talking over here like when you see this particular diagram you see an external device so what is an external device over here so external device is nothing but a client again back to say if i have uh, like a client who basically can communicate via using your laptop or maybe he may be communicating via smartphone or he may be communicating uh, uh, via a particular um, you know ipad or any kind of the devices because the communication basically that comes to your particular middleware server that basically happens via using any of these external devices so whenever any client he basically sends a request under the middleware there are two types of the server which i will let you know what are those two server just for your understanding as a current scenario there are basically two types of the servers called as a web server and an application server so what happens here is that your external device it basically sends a request to your particular web server and your web server it sends a request to your application server and your application server sends a request to your database and accordingly your response is been sent back again back to the application server to the web server and back to your external device so basically it's simple like for example you are trying to log into an icici bank page and you have hit the url icici bank.com so that response you will be getting back from via going through the web server application server and a database server so this is how the request and response happen now the question comes what is a web server what is an application server that is a part of the middleware so i'll explain you that let me quickly open a notepad <clears throat> So if you see here under the middleware middleware basically consists of two types of the server web server and another one we call as a application application server uh, once again i have written a spelling wrong application server okay so these are the two types of the server that exist what is a web server a web server is the one which basically handles all your http or https request okay coming to the application server even it is the one which can handle your http as well as https request so what is this http or https http or https is basically a protocol it's a protocol through which you access a particular website if you really see here like uh, for instance if you see you are seeing my gmail so if you are seeing the gmail over here so when you are hitting a particular url gmail.com all the requests are been served via using your http or https protocol http stands for a non secured https stand for a secured protocol okay so why are we using a https that is a secured protocol that is nothing but you are trying the browser tries to acknowledge itself saying like it is proving itself saying like i am a certified url i am a very safe url or you can say that i am a very safe website which you can uh, you know which you can access it so it's basically providing its authentication to the browser saying like hey boss 
you are accessing me and I'm a right one you can access me there is no issues if you access me sometimes I'm not sure you would have faced this kind of the issue sometimes when you hit a particular URL sometimes you get a page like uh, uh, the page consists to be uh, uh, like you know not uh, 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 safe or something like that and it gives you a message like do you still want to continue and you say like yes continue and you make an advanced continue and just simply you then you navigate to the page uh, have you ever come across these things uh, uh, Gautam I think you would have come across somewhere other some sites you would have come across like where you would be seeing such kind of the errors when you hit a particular URL have you come across yes yes I do. right you know yes, why you come across that one because that website is not secured maybe they are using the HTTPS protocol uh, <clears throat> but what is here happening is that Whenever the URL has been accessed, what really happens is that your website is not secured if the certificate is not enabled. Certificate means it basically tries to inform that I am an authorized person. It's a simple thing. Let me make you a very simple. You purchase, uh, like, uh, for example, the items in a very less price, what has been sent in an Amazon or a Flipkart, whatever it is, the shopping carts. Okay, you would prefer to buy the items from there rather than buying an item from a probably you know uh, from uh, from a person who is selling on a road uh, maybe because you don't know how that particular item would be because uh, he would be uh, uh, you know giving away in the same price what an Amazon or a Flipkart would be giving but still you think for a second because you think that I don't know how would be the quality I really don't know how that particular uh, uh, you know the item that he is going to uh, sell it to me so I really don't know how it will be so you prefer let me buy from a branded one that is from the Amazon or a flip card because at least they guarantee that this much of uh, uh, refund would be there or if it breaks or something you can sell it back to me or something so these are the kind of the response back you find from the flip card as well so why you are buying from a flip card why you are buying from an Amazon the reason is that you say that they basically say that we are the authorized persons we have the certification saying like yes we are the right persons to be uh, bought from our particular website and you will get a hundred percent of the guarantee so they are have they have their own trademark right so similarly in a browser whenever you access a website so basically your request and the response it comes from a particular protocol nothing but called as a HTTP or a HTTPS and it can be either be a secured website it can be a non secured website it depends like what kind of the uh, protocol you are using it so basically coming back over here your web server basically handle all your HTTP and HTTPS requests same with the application server level also so whenever you want to hit a URL if you want to send a request directly to an application server uh, let's say for instance like a client sending a request to your particular I'll write it in a short form web server to the application server and there could be a scenario where a client can send a request to the application server and uh, internally to your particular database so there could be any kind of this architecture that can be followed basically this kind of the architecture is defined based on the business requirement if we are going to access a website internally then we may be going with an application server anyways you will get more clarity when I explain you on the web server and application server so apart from your web server and the application server handling the HTTP request what is the next difference the next difference is that your web server basically supports all your static content okay so what do you mean by a static content the static content is nothing but uh, any kind of a HTML PDF doc XML files or uh, you can say like uh, uh, any kind of the spreadsheets Excel sheets or uh, 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 any kind of a text file these are all called as a static and why you are saying it as a static content the reason is that there you are not going the information whatever will be displayed to the client via using any of these particular static files okay they all will be hard coded let's take an example I am uh, I have a company and I want to display myself about what my company does I want to say like see this is what my company is uh, we have a so much of turnover and all this thing. do you really think that that information I'm going to really store it in a database no I don't think so why because it's just a static information it's just only a one-time change that I need to make and which will be there for a longer period and in future if I have to change I'll just only change that particular value so 
this kind of the information what has been displayed those informations are usually been displayed on a particular static page let's say an instance like on a particular html page or maybe you are uh, uh, like uh, hitting a url and immediately what happens is that a pop-up comes up and that particular pop-up shows you the information of a particular pdf file it gets opened in a pdf file which is nothing but probably you logged into a particular you just hit a uh, some insurance based url and uh, say let's say like you know you hit some lic dot Com. and when you have hit lic.com the lic people wants you to uh, they have introduced some new scheme and they have the browser been uploaded on the website and they want you to see that particular pop-up that is getting opened so that information the content which you see in the particular website is nothing but it's a, a static content information which you are basically seeing so that is what we call as a static and static content means nothing but the information that i want to show you but which is physically existing like something like you know which has been hard coded it is not coming something from a database or anything it is just simply an hard coded so that is what we call as a static content okay coming to the application server your application server is the one which basically handles dynamic content okay uh, just a second just a second okay i'm uh, back yeah sorry sorry for interrupting in the middle yeah uh, Coming to the uh, dynamic content when you really talk about okay uh, uh, dynamic content is the one where you basically apply all your business logics okay uh, let me give you back again the example let me give you back again the example let's say for instance like uh, you are trying to log in into an icicabank.com okay you want to log into your account personal account and you want to view your account details you want to see your account information what is the balance that you are having how much amount is created and the debited all those information you want to see now in order to log in you will be giving your username you give your particular password right so when you give your username and the password when you press the submit button what really happens so if your data is existing in any of your particular database at the back end level when the request basically comes uh, your respective application server what it would be doing is that it will take that particular request and uh, if any of the query that is supposed to be executed let's say for an instance like select start from this particular table and uh, with this particular username and this particular password if it really matches then the result should be something like a true or something if that is the result means like the like i mean to say that okay fine you are uh, the user id and the password that the particular user has requested has entered is correct so immediately i need to send him back the response by navigating him to the home page of an icicabank.com so this particular transaction what you, uh, you you understand is like you know that transaction is basically happening from your database fetching the information from the database and sending back the response to the client so this kind of the logical calculation what you are doing or a business logic what you are applying is something we call as a dynamic content and these kind of the things can be implemented at application server level not at a web server level okay so that is the main difference over here so your web server is the one who basically handles the static content and your application server is the one who basically uh, uh, basically you know handles all your specific dynamic content so anything like you log into the icsa bank page whatever you see the information like this is the total amount you have this much created this much deleted do you really think the total amount what you see over here the figure is that a hard coded one no actually that is not hard coded the only values that would be available in the database is you are credited debited and all this information but on a fly when you do plus minus among this credited and the debited out of the total transaction that you have been doing is equal to is your total available balance but that balance amount what you see it happens on a fly means like i would be doing some multiplication i would be doing some subtraction i would be doing some addition whatever this kind of the logic that i would be applying it i would be applying it on a fly so the value would be coming dynamically from the database the final output and that output i usually will be displaying it on a particular uh, uh, website on a particular page that the user is viewing it so that is what we call as a dynamic content is it clear the the main difference between a web server and a application server any questions yeah, it's clear but uh, i'm asking a question uh, as a application uh, admin we have to deal with uh, content also yeah. um content means static contents you are saying 
ரெஸ்பான்சிபிலிட்டி <laughs> host that application actual the term what we say is that deploy that is the term hosting i just make it simple to uh, make a, a new person to understand because hosting a person can easily understand deployments he gets confused a bit okay so hosting the actual technical term that we use in a middleware is deployments okay we do deployments of an application on a particular application server level that is what we do and uh, uh, any kind of the database communication that we need to do means like setting up some data source correction i'm not sure if you would have heard as a dba like uh, the application support team usually they do the data source connection so the database team provides us the database details means like what is the username what is the password host name port number of that particular database and uh, uh, and uh, the sid information all these things they give and what we do is that we configure it at our level so that uh, we are not uh, hard coding any database configuration i'm not talking about the queries queries would be there at the code level but what we do is that we configure a data source and we do manage all the connection pooling part at our level at the web sphere application server level why are using a particular data source anyways that you know uh, you will get a more detailed explanation when uh, you will be uh, you know uh, continuing the classes and because there is a separate section for a data so jdbc connection what we say okay so those particular connections we do try to establish with the database and in between if there is any issues or any problem then we do get in touch with the database team we ask them boss uh, our server is very frequently hanging we see too many connections in our uh, logs i mean like uh, from our web sphere level so can you please check it out at your level is there any kind of the database problem is there any kind of the issues that is basically happening so based on that they verify and if there is something maybe they may be going for a database reboot and all this thing again their our picture will not be there because it is purely a database guy has to take care so yes once he is done the rest of the thing is that we need to take care at our end maybe we have to bounce the server or maybe we may have to flush out the connections that is currently available at the web sphere level and then accordingly we can uh, make sure that the application is running fine so this is how the okay. roles is been defined okay okay and one more difference um, uh, talking about uh, uh, the difference between a web server and uh, uh, application server it's not like in the web server you cannot implement a dynamic content you can implement it but only up to a certain level not the maximum so what is that certain level you can implement a jsp you can implement a servlet so only these two kinds of the java j2e component you can very well implement at a uh, stat, uh, at a particular web server level why because your web server is considered to be as a lightweight based server it is never considered as a heavyweight based server so if i want to implement uh, one of the java j2e component like say let's say ejb enterprise java beans okay if i want to implement that i cannot really implement ejbs at a particular web server level because your ejb is consists of all your specific business logic it's basically a bean what you can say you know which has all kind of the logics and everything that we try to implement and it's very heavy component also such a kind of the heavy component your web server cannot really handle if you want to go with any kind of simple application a simple application you know like uh, where uh, uh, like for example like let's say like i just want to uh, create an application where uh, hr can just uh, um, you know uh, insert the employee information update in the database that's it so such kind of a small application not again again a big applications like hrms i'm not talking about a very small application where i just want to insert the employee details that's it so such kind of the simple applications are a small applications i can very well implement at a particular web server level so those things i can implement. or i can give you the another best example like for example like uh, <clears throat> i am holding a company and i am exhibiting about my company apart from that i give one option also called as a carriers 
okay so that carries uh, uh, from there you know if somebody wants to upload for any job or if he wants to upload his resume such kind of a simple application that i can keep it at the web server level because not many people are really going to use it very frequently it's not like again like a nokri portal where heavy heavy based applications are you know the documents and uh, uh, what you can say the resumes are getting uploaded so those kind of the very small simple applications i can host it at a web server level but whereas when you talk about uh, application server level okay uh, i can place any kind of a java java j2e based code apart from that in this java j2e i can place ejb i can place hyper net based applications i can have the springs i can have uh, uh, you know struts so any of this kind of the multiple components of your java j2e based those can be maintained at a particular application server not only that even you can have any kind of a php based application if somebody has developed any kind of a php based application those also can be hosted on a particular application server which cannot be done again on a web server level so this is the major difference between your application server and the web server okay and uh, coming to the types of the web servers that we have available in the market so uh, we are having many web servers currently available in the market to name a few the mostly that is being used is your apache you have ihs ibm stdb server which we are going to use it along with your web sphere application server we have uh, 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 like a tomcat tomcat is considered to be as a uh, like a tomcat is considered to be as a, a particular application server uh, we do have a ias IS comes along with your particular Windows operating system. By default, it has been enabled. Uh, but uh, still, if you want to uh, use it, you can very well use the IS. But mostly, IS we use it to connect to the backend service, something like called as a .NET based application. But again, do remember .NET based applications. We cannot install it on any of the application server. The reason why it is because .NET is a very platform specific. It is very specific to the windows and you have to install it as a binary on each and every machine that is how you basically go with a particular dot .NET based application okay um, and uh, we do uh, uh, implement iplanet iplanet is a product again of a uh, uh, oracle oracle is the company who basically you know uh, uh, like uh, basically have this particular product called as a iplanet apart from iplanet um, we do have a uh, uh, oracle HTTP or uh, like you can say like Oracle HTTP server. So uh, this is also a kind of the web servers we have. These are the mainly mostly been used in the market. Coming to the dynamic, uh, basically at the application server level, what are the different applications? So your web sphere is considered as an application server. So if any time if you have to talk with anybody about your web sphere be sure that you need to tell him that your web server is an application server don't tell it like it's a web server most commonly the people do mistakes when they basically talk about a web server web sphere application server and uh, apart from that you have web logic okay so web logic is also considered as a application server you do have a jboss you have i plan uh, sorry uh, tomcat again over here because tomcat as i told you you know like a web server can also handle your uh, some part of your dynamic content that is nothing but your jsp sensible so your tomcat is the one so your tomcat can very well handle it can be taken care of as a web server it will be taken as a application server so any of the way you can um, uh, put it across okay now talking about the application servers as i told you web sphere is basically a product of the ibm ibm is the company who has basically uh, introduced this particular product and it is very successful in the market web sphere is considered to be as a more secured application server okay it's considered to be a highly secured application server as compared to the other applications are no doubt the strong competitor is oracle web logic server he is also one of the strong competitor uh, but still web sphere is considered to be mostly as a uh, strong in terms of the security uh, oracle also do comes as a more strong security but oracle the main advantage why it is uh, booming in the market is that is only one of the main reason the main reason is that uh, because of its 
diffusion middleware concept so you can integrate web logic with any kind of the servers like you know probably you are like an oracle apps db and you want to integrate your oracle apps db with a particular web logic server so that you can do it if you are implementing some soa based component on anything so those things you can implement with the web logic server so this is the reason why there is a strong boom for the oracle web logic server. but again Web sphere and web logic both are a very secured uh, uh, kind of the servers and they are both are a licensed versions. Okay, they both uh, basically are the licensed version. It's not a freeware. You need to buy a license for that and your license itself cost a very costly affair. It is again. Okay, and uh, when you really talk about um, um, uh, So that that is what about your web sphere and a uh, particular web logic server and jboss again it's an open source it's a, um, uh, it's a freeware basically it's not a licensed one earlier it was open source it was been developed by the some of the developers but now the jboss is been taken care by the red hat you would have you would be knowing about a red hat red hat is a particular company okay who basically has developed this linux and all these things so red hat is are the one who basically now they are providing the complete support support so they have acquired this jboss now but still it's a freeware it's not a licensed one and uh, tomcat as i told you it's again open source it's a freeware uh, um, which is again been developed by the jakarta jakarta is uh, nothing but you know few students who have basically come and they have developed this particular tomcat so this is all about your the multiple application servers that you have available and multiple web servers and when you really talk about this architecture as i was explaining you over here so if you see here client can directly interact with your web server and then with your application server client can interact even directly with your application server also so why i am saying that web server keeping a web server is not really a requirement the reason is that if you are going in a globally means like take an example of icsa bank or gmail all these the websites you know which are being used globally by the multiple people at that time you do require a web server because your web server provides lots of security features in a security level your web server is considered to be very good and it is very good in terms of handling all your requests and the response and everything i don't say that your application cannot really handle it it can also handle the same as a web server but because an application server is a heavyweight based server so we don't want to put any kind of the load on an application server level so that is the reason we go with the web server but in some scenarios the client can directly interact with an application server it is only in a scenario if you are accessing your website maybe internally or maybe there are very one or two users who are going to access your particular website only at such situations you would be going with this particular kind of architecture so this is how uh, you know uh, like you are basically the initial uh, that we were discussing about uh, you know, this uh, application server so this is how your middleware architecture really works so any any questions gautam you have anything you want to ask me yeah actually you say that uh, web logic can use any type of server right not any type of the server that's the I mean that's the advantage you said in. Ah, oh, okay, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Web logic, uh, it can be integrated with any kind of the, uh, you know, the fusion middleware components. You would have heard about it. Uh, in the Oracle people are nowadays very fond of fusion middleware. You uh, have you heard of it, fusion middleware? Mm, sorry. Okay. Okay. Fine. Nowadays in the market, it's a very hot topic, fusion middleware. Okay. So uh, fusion middleware is nothing but uh, uh, basically it's a combination of multiple servers, different different set of the server, and they bought it as a single platform. It's nothing but simple example like a cloud. You know, in a cloud, uh, like you have everything on a single operating system, and whatever the way you want to play with it, you can play it just like a plug and play. Similarly, Oracle has introduced a fusion middleware component. Okay, so this particular fusion middleware, it is very today you know it is like running in the market like anything okay and the people are very fond of it and uh, for a better business components or for a better business like uh, uh, your flipkart all these things uh, you are aware right flipkart amazon they all run on a fusion middleware again let me tell you that because they uh, try to communicate at the back end level with multiple transactions and all these things so they are all dealing with the multiple fusion middleware components so again the base is again your web logic server on top of it you can have any kind of the composite based servers so that is how uh, uh, it is so that's what actually i was trying so to so yeah we can use the fusion middleware and ibm 
you can use it you can use it but up to the certain level not all like soa you can use it you can integrate with an ibm uh, but again it depends it depends like uh, uh, if you want uh, to go with something like uh, forms and reports so that is something which more a database guy has to do it but again it's like you know displaying a kind of the reports and all those things so if you uh, you being from the application support team you want to see those kind of the information so again you have that part of the company but yes you can use but up to the certain extent but oracle provides you the more option that is how it is okay. Okay. so see actually uh, websphere is mostly been used in the web banking domain uh, let's say the example your icsa bank it basically runs on a websphere but again when you talk about an sdfc bank sdfc runs on a web logic server so it basically deals with um, what the business wants so if the business has to run on a particular server so we basically decide on that i mean we basically take the requirement what they are looking for so based on their requirement we do deal with uh, in a multiple way again websphere has its own advantage like you can have mq and mb so whatever the back end transactions you have right mq and mb is nothing but messaging queue and messaging broker so these are the medium through which your transactions happen at the back end level whatever today you know you may be sending 10000 rupees to some of your friend or uh, they would be somebody sending you the money whatever this online transactions you are doing so at the back end level this mqmb works really in a picture so these are all the things which and your whatsapp you whatever you see you are sending a message to your particular friend so all this kind of the communication that happens via using your jms mqmb again jms concept is there in all the application servers like you have even in on a web logic server you have on a web sphere and all this thing. but again ibm has provided you an additional option like if you want to go with a more customized option then you can go with the mq and then mb mb means messaging broker that is nothing but which sits between your uh, web sphere and a uh, uh, messaging queue system so it sits between that and he is the one who basically sends and serves the messages so it's simple thing like for example um, i want to go from place a to place b from a particular bus okay so how can i really go so i have to go via a particular bus so bus is the medium through which i can be uh, uh, reached to the destination so in, in a simple way your mb basically works so these are all the multiple extra components which you we want you can integrate with the web sphere again it's not like you cannot integrate with your web logic you can do it but again it purely depends on the business requirement how do they really want to go with okay so okay. yeah any any other questions yeah you said uh, mq right uh, so we have to learn this that one also um mq uh, it's not that required it depends if the company is using mq also then at least you should have an understanding but if you have an understanding of a web sphere see mq mb they both are all together a separate topic so if you want to learn mq it's not a particular problem you can very well learn an mq uh, but yes if you want i mean like if the company has a requirement you should be knowing about it because web sphere and mq they both are very hot topic in the market web sphere okay. and MQ. yeah okay so yeah so that is all uh, uh, what i have onto this uh, particular demo part onto the middleware architecture that is the main thing which i think a person should be aware so um, um, uh, because you know based out of that then he has a clear understanding when taking a training on a web sphere or working on a web sphere then he gets an understanding okay fine this is how the rest of the things are happening okay so that is all about from my end so you need to ask me any questions or anything before i wrap up or uh, whatever if you want to ask me any questions about anything anything you can check with me mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, and this is a confusion about uh, MQ only. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I don't know about MQ, so I just have a confusion about that only. Okay. No, no. Uh, MQ so, is. Uh huh. Okay. Tell me. Tell me. With as as a web sphere admin, we have to learn MQ also. It is not mandatory. If you learn it, it will be an added advantage to you. Nothing more than that. 
See, MQ okay. is okay. not used. Uh, let me explain you over here. MQ is not been used everywhere in the market. Let me tell you because MQ mostly comes in a picture if you are going in any of the financial domain. If you are going in a financial domain, then mostly you would be using MQ. But again, it depends because already WebSphere provides you the JMS option. So if there is no major uh, financial transactions or something not getting involved, then people do go with a simple JMS configuration also, which is again a part of your particular WebSphere application server course. Okay, but if do if some people if they want to configure in a financial domain the MQ or something like that, then yes, you need to have an understanding in MQ. But again, it depends because sometimes the recruiters they recruit a person who only have a knowledge on a web sphere because there could be again be a separate MQ team also there could be a separate team so you may not be sitting along with them you are only concentrating on the web sphere so it purely depends it purely depends how a particular uh, you know uh, like team wants to go ahead with okay so that is how it is but if you have an understanding on a web sphere that is uh, you know it covers your uh, uh, most of the 100% part of the work because if you are searching for a job and all this thing so mostly what they at least expect from you that you know you have an understanding on a web sphere application server that is what they try to understand so that is how it is okay yeah yeah so that's the thing and again if you want to learn you can learn separate it, it would be an added advantage that's it not nothing uh, uh, it's a simple thing uh, like for instance uh, uh, you know you are basically from a database team you have worked on an oracle and uh, Tomorrow, like you even learned a DB2, okay, database. But maybe in future, like you may not have a requirement of DB2, but you may be working on an Oracle. So it is something like this. So it's an additional feature what you have. If they are going to use it, if you have learned a DB2, then it's an additional advantage. That is how it is. Okay. okay. So as a Respire can use uh, any database, right? I mean, it's uh, yes, still yes. large equal. Yes, yes. It can use okay. any database, even if there is any kind of a third-party vendor uh, who is having his own database. You can very well define it within your website. Okay. 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 So that's the thing. And uh, coming to the course, uh, like a course is completely of a 30 hours of course duration. Okay, I'll just uh, explain you on that. So it's basically completely uh, 30 hours of the course duration. Um, so uh, basically, uh, mostly uh, like um, uh, I have to see like uh, when exactly you're going to take the class that I need to discuss with the respective consultant. Uh, it's uh, 30 hours of the course. And uh, in the 30 hours of the course, I would be covering everything that is from the scratch of the installation to the end of using there's a uh, VAS ADM scripting tool is there okay so uh, it's a basically a command line kind of the scripting tool and uh, you know, so uh, till that particular topic so it includes uh, everything like in your web sphere like installation your clustering your data source creation and all this thing these are all the things which would be covered uh, during your particular period of the course and also I'll be discussing mainly with you on the performance training and also because as you are looking for a job search and all this thing so at the end of the course not only at the end of the course in the mid of the course talking each and every topic I'll be giving you the real-time examples uh, from my side I mean like it is like explaining you like what exactly kind of the issues that you would face what is the kind of the question that an interviewer may ask and all this thing and apart from that uh, finally I'll be giving you some sample interview questions and all these things you know uh, maximum interview questions that a particular uh, web sphere uh, you know uh, like basically in an interview what they really expect from you on the web sphere so those things I'll be covering up for you and this 30 of us it includes both the conceptual so it is something like today if I have explained you on the concept tomorrow I'll make sure that you are done with the practical part if you are stuck anywhere so I will be making sure that you are out of it you are completed that particular part and then we'll be going with the next topic of our class so that way I'll be handling so one day from my side one day anyways at your home when you try it if you are uh, uh, stuck or something next day I'll continue in fixing up your issue once that is done then I will move with the next topic so that is how it will be and uh, apart from that I'll be sharing you like uh, a classroom notebook so uh, it is a PPT like this similarly how you saw the PPT so there will be a, a quick guidance kind of a PPT or you can say classroom notebook which you can quickly glance at any point of time 
and uh, any kind of uh, installation steps if you want to see uh, on a windows or on a linux operating system so those kind of the idea that i'll be letting you know how to do it and all those things so all those things i'll be letting you know so uh, uh, so that is the ppt that i'll share and apart from that i'll be sharing you the ibm itself a uh, uh, red book is there it's about uh, some uh, uh, thousand or two thousand pages something it is so i'll be sharing you that pdf uh, uh, during the part of the so that is what all i will be doing i mean i'll be giving the training and apart from that you would be getting the recording session so you will be having my recording so like for this one hour whatever the uh, uh, demo we had so you will be having the recording session which even i can share if you are not able to record it or else um, uh, you can even record it at your end and you can save it at your particular machine okay which you can take it as a reference so this is all about the okay. course and content yeah so okay can you change the timings please and can, because i can attend up to um, 8th of june in this timings after that i am going to another place so sorry uh, i'm sorry. going to uh, okay no timing means this will not be the timing the time actually i'm going to uh, no this will not be the time probably we will be going back for other time that i'll be discussing with the uh, you know the respective consultant and we'll be letting you know when exactly i'll be taking it up okay but it will be okay. as per your convenient okay. time only it will be uh, something which will be agreed between you and me and uh, that convenient time only will be because i know like i think now it would be very too late for you i suppose yeah actually i am staying right now in california so it's in est it's 9:30 only okay but after july so, uh, june 8 uh, going to some other place yeah it's est so it's almost at 12 like <laughs> okay okay no 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 don't worry that 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 i will uh, mention to the respective consultant so i'll discuss but of course like this will not be the time because of course like this time is probably a uh, difficult for you also so i'll i'll let you know i mean i'll discuss with them so they will be letting you know what exactly the time i'll take and it would be a convenient time okay. for you okay so um, that is how it is up to eight no problem i can attend this time also no problem up to 8 okay, minutes uh, uh, my uh, india time 8 8 am is you are talking about yes okay 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 ah, no no i mean at up to june 8 acha up to june 8 it not a problem okay, okay. yeah yeah okay. after okay. that uh, we can schedule on morning i mean uh, in est okay on okay. at 11 so at that time is in india so it's 8 or 8:30 pm yeah yeah 8:30 pm yeah Okay, fine, fine. So, if, so please share with us uh, timings, then then I will adjust it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I will discuss with the consultant, and uh, probably they will get back to you with what uh, time. Uh, they will okay, discuss okay. with me and with you, and uh, finally they will come to the particular time. Don't worry about that. Okay. So okay. you can you can tell your appropriate time. Uh, you can tell one single time only. We'll go with one slot of a single time only, so that you know we don't keep on okay. changing. That should be convenient to you, and that should be convenient to me. In that way, we can plan it. Okay. Is there any chance to increase the session timings in weekend, sir? Um, that I really need to check because you know already the existing batches are going on, uh, one after other, one after other. Mostly the students are okay. even from the US also. So, uh, okay. uh, yeah. But at any point of time, like over the weekend or something, I can uh, work it out. Like uh, when the weekend, like I'm available and I can take the class for you. Then I can make it out even for the weekend, like making up to two hours or something. But I'll let you know. I'll let the consultant know because I need to even work out on the, okay. the weekday times and the weekends. I need to really find out because currently I'm already, uh, you know, having a slot already uh, on the weekdays, and probably we are thinking to change some slot of other student or something. We are basically discussing on that. So you know, that that they will let you know. Don't worry about that. Okay. 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 Okay, so that's the thing. So we have the class tomorrow at this time. Uh, tomorrow not, not, not tomorrow. Uh, uh, basically because tomorrow I'll be going to office. Okay, uh, I have my office on the weekend. Uh, I'll let you know when exactly I'm going to start, but mostly it will be started. Uh, I'll let you know. I'll, I'll let you know the time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank so in one or the one or the other day I'll be starting it, but I'll let you know. Okay, I mean, I'll let the consultant know because I need to discuss with them like uh, on the timings part, and uh, then I'll let you know. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. Bye.